Okay, welcome back. Um, right now I want to demonstrate the, um, the, the second main assignment for uh, uh, design modeling um, in uh, using uh, Autodesk Inventor. This, we're calling this the uh, sketch plane cube and so what we're going to do is we're going to create another new file, new part file this time, and the standard inch IPT. Okay, here we are. We, we have a new start to our file and this time, instead of making a one-inch uh, box, I'm going to make a uh, two-inch box, two-inch uh, square, and uh, you know, similar to what we did before here. I start at the center. I go up into positive territory. Instead of uh, one inch, I'm going to go two inch. And remember, we can type in these dimensions here. So I can go, I can type in a two, and I press the tab key, and it goes to the other dimension, the uh, how high it's going to be, two and tab. And now I'm locked in. You can see the little locks there. And uh, some some folks forget we when we get this last, uh, when we type in these uh, numbers, we still need to have a. We can hit return or enter or have a mouse click. We still have to set that last point right there. So I, I do a mouse click and now it's set in. And we've got our two inch uh, square to start with. And I'm going to go up here to uh, finish sketch or we can right click finish 2D sketch. And here we go. And if you recall from last time we're going to use uh, uh, the extrude to make this and bring this into three dimensions. I'm going to right click extrude in, in extrude and it should assume well, it assumes one inch so I'm gonna have to go in here and type in I'll just type in a two and click OK go back to my home view and this is a sketch plane cube so now I'll make this assignment a little more complicated we're gonna we're gonna do some new things we're gonna add details to this this part here this uh, this cube and the first detail we're gonna work with is a, a hole it's gonna be simple enough for me I'm, I'm gonna use the hole here uh, the whole tool in um, um, the, the, the 3D tools and um, all I need to do here is just click here near the middle and uh, a couple of things about this hole I, I want the diameter to be uh, one inch so I'm going to use my tab key and tab over to the diameter to set here to be one inch but I also don't want to drill all the way through. I only want to go th part way through. See how it's, go how it's going all the way down. I can uh, go over here to termination and go to distance and then over here I can tell it how deep to go and I only want it to go half an inch deep and then drill point instead of being a regular t uh, drill tool we're going to use just a flat drill tool so it's going to make a flat bottom. But before I apply this I want to establish how far away this should be from um, from each side here. I got I got to position this. I want to position the center of my hole I've drilled uh, in the middle. And so to do that, I'm going to use these reference points here. We we do placement linearly, and I can establish where the center is from, uh, as a distance from here here. So now right there, I, it's you know I don't want to be 1.07. I want to be straight 1.0 and I'm going to click on reference number two and click the other edge, the perpendicular edge and here again I'm just going to bring that down to just 1.0 and hit apply and there's my and there's my hole. Easy enough. This next part is going to be a little bit uh, uh, different. Uh, we're, we're now we want to make, we have a square hole, we want to make a, excuse me, a, a circular hole we now want to make a, a circular peg. In order to do that I need to add on a, a cylinder onto my surface right here. But to start I'm going to right click on this face and I'm going to go down here to New Sketch. And because it's going to be a circular object I want to place I'm going to use and create a circular tool. And um, here this is where I, I can go back in and type in dimensions again. We want this to be one inch away from everything. And that lock, I type in one tab, one tab. And that locks me in in the middle here. So all I have to do is click. And then this is going to be just like our hole was one diameter, uh, one inch in diameter. I'm going to type in a one, excuse me, not a two, a one, and tab. And that's going to lock me in. And so I've placed it. I've got my diameter. And I click. And I've drawn it in. 
So I've just made a new sketch on the face of my part, and I'm going to right-click, Finish 2D Sketch, and I've got this new piece right here. And just like when I started from scratch and extrude it, now all I need to do is right-click, Extrude, and then, and then I need to select the face separate from of the main part of the, of the face here. And now it's assuming I want to do uh, 2 inches, but in this case, if you remember the depth was 0.5, I want to do 0.5. out and click OK. So if I roll this around you can see now I've got a circular hole and a circular peg. Next thing is to do uh, the round, excuse me, the uh, square hole and square peg. So we're going to come over here to another face and I'm going to make a new sketch. And now I've got to draw a square. Um, it's going to be a one inch by one inch uh, square inside here, but I want to I want to start my first point. So I'm going to go over here to a minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, and that's going to lock me in to that first point. And I'm going to click to start my first point, and then all I need to do is just one tab, one tab, similar to what I did in the first assignment, and click OK. And now I've got my one inch uh, square right here, and I know that it's one, uh, excuse me, half an inch up and half an inch over here. So it should be placement in the middle here. So you got to watch your placement on this stuff. Make sure you get this stuff centered on the face. And then I can right click, finish 2D sketch. And just like I did before, I can right click, mm, right click, extrude, pick the surface I want to extrude. It remembered half inch from before. I click OK. And there we are. Um, I'm going to have to draw another sketch with the, and make another square in order to go in and make my square hole. So just as I did before, I'm going to start in minus 0 0.5, 0 0.5, lock that in, click, drag up, but I, re I really only need to be one tab, one tab, and click. And here's my other sketch. And I'm going to finish 2D sketch. But we're going to do this different now. We're going to do extrude and I got to click on the surface, but I don't want it to go out, I want it to go in. If you notice here, I've got another direction I can click right here. I can go in right there. Click OK. And now I've got my hole that goes in. What I'd like you to do uh, for the rest of this part is to establish um, peg uh, and hole on the other on the remaining faces. You can do whichever ones you want. If you want to do the square and the peg, that's fine. And then uh, you can save it out as different materials. I'm going to do this really quickly here. All right, I've got my. Uh, little sketch plane cube, two inch cube, and it's got uh, n a number of uh, pegs and holes on it, and I've got something on every surface. And so now I'm going to save. Um, I don't know if you want to abbreviate this as, um, we'll call this a gray cube, but you want to append maybe uh, SK. Uh, SPC, as in sketch plane cube assignment, so you can differentiate that these these from the other uh, documents, and uh, you know that we did from the first one, and I'll save, and I want to make this now a, a new color, a different material. When do I want you to remember to do a save as every time you do a color. Uh, you, uh, I'm getting some folks who who are making, um, who are doing saves, and they're getting their, their gray cubes are really pink cubes, and their uh, other other cubes are different colors because they're doing a, they're changing the color and then saving and not doing a save as. And so you got to watch out for that. Okay, I've created uh, th three or four uh, files, and now I'm going to make a 
standard inch IAM assembly. And I'm going to bring these in together. And um, you really, you know, do five or six uh, uh, pieces together for me in a, you know, whatever geometric shape you want to create. But um, there's one of the things I want you to do is I want you to make sure you match up this, the, the, the pegs and the holes. Um, the square pegs and the square holes and, and round pegs and the round holes, but there is a there is a, a different um, there's a different uh, uh, constraint we can use when we do this that I want to demonstrate. See, so I want you to uh, uh, pay it very close attention here. Okay, so um, you're gonna you, when you when you do these assemblies, you're gonna do uh, the the when you do the pegs, uh, the square pegs. You'll use a pretty standard way of doing the assembly with the um, uh, with with flushes and mates. But for the for cylindrical placements, uh, uh, cylinder holes, uh, pegs into into uh, ho uh, holes, you're gonna use a different kind of constraint. I'm gonna go to the constraint tool, and here we're gonna look at. Uh, this tool right here, it's called the insert tool, and this is going to be a little easier to, for you to work with. We're going to do um, opposed, uh, I think is what we want to use. So then what I need to do is I'm going to select where I want to, uh, what I want to align up. So I want to align, basically, I want to align the, the lower part of this cylinder with the upper part of my hole right here. And it's going to fly right over there and I hit apply. And when I cancel out of this, one of the things you're going to see what's going to happen is I can I can now turn this. It knows that it's it should be able to rotate because it's circular and I can turn it. Um, problems with this. There there is some mistakes you can make. I want you to see, I'm gonna I'm gonna undo this. I want you to see part of the problems that we run into sometimes with this. Sometimes when we do the insert, maybe we, we choose this one uh, and we can, let's see what this one does if I do that, if I use the wrong insert. And yeah, that's not going to work. Uh, so I want to make sure we use the, not the aligned, but the opposed. Um, cancel. Uh, I want to do, I want you to be aware of Selecting the right thing. If I if I select the upper line here, and the upper uh, upper edge of the cylinder here, now I've got this in place. But I don't know if you can see there's now there's a gap because it's not inserted all the way in. So you got to watch out for that. And another thing you got to watch out for is selecting the the base here and the base of the hole, and now it's going to be inserted too far. So you got to watch out for doing that. You want to make sure you do this right. Okay, so I'm going to go back in and get this put in place. You want the base of this cylinder and the upper part of the hole. I hit apply, cancel, and again, this one wants to be able to rotate around. All right. I'm going to connect this hole to this one here. fairly conventional way of working with this. I can take and I can, uh, maybe I'll do the mate first. I want to mate this surface, the outer part of the peg, with the inner part of the, of the square hole. If I hit apply and cancel, but I w realize now I can still move this around. If I rotate this around, it stays lined up. See, can you see how that's staying lined up in there? But now I need to flush this all together so it stays in one spot. So I'm going to go back into constraint and I want to flush this surface to this surface and it kind of went out of whack here but just do the other upper surface here and now it should be in place apply cancel and now this guy's locked into place because it's a square peg but I can turn it around because of the uh, the insert between the uh, zinc and the purple so go ahead and place at least three more give me give me six uh, pieces that you can put together here uh, they don't all have to be moving. I want some that are locked in square pegs and some that can, uh, can turn it around. Don't forget to save your assembly. Sketch plane cube.